Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here. And you're wondering, why are we looking at a world map? Well, this is Hearts of Iron 4. It was released on D-Day, June 6th, so 10 days ago. And I picked it up, being a big uh, Paradox Interactive fan. If you're not familiar, Hearts of Iron 4 would be uh, much like playing Axis and Allies or Risk with over 100 of your closest friends without even taking turns. Uh, Grand Strategy starts in January 1936, and you can literally play as any country that existed in 1936. So you can be some of the big players in the world, such as the Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin, the German Reich with Adolf Hitler, the United Kingdom, with Neville Chamberlain, who will be quickly ousted when he doesn't do anything about Hitler and his incursion to the Rhineland, uh, and that will lead to Churchill's rising up. You can be the United States recovering fr uh, from their Great Depression, or even someone like, say, Canada or Mexico. Or you can get in here nice and close and say, I want to play as Siam during the Second World War. This game runs from 1936 to 1949, allowing World War II to happen, and if you turn off historical AI focuses, things can really go off the rails. Uh, let me load up my current game, and I am playing a game as Iraq. Now, when I began the game, let uh, I'll explain to you my sort of... Uh, I'll explain to you my, yeah. I'll explain to you my level of thinking. You can see here already on the map that France has quite a bit of land. The German Reich is no more. Uh, the Iraqi Republic is here uh, outside the borders of Iraq. You can see the, the old border here. And I have taken most of Saudi Arabia. But the reason that we see all these British and French and United States flags is unfortunately by 1946 uh, our uh, faction was defeated. So when I started the game here in Iraq I only had one military factory. Right now I have 17 military factories. But starting out as a low country, one military factory producing just equipment. I wasn't producing anything such as tanks, artillery, nothing. And I was looking around and said, if I had to pick a friend, because if we don't pick friends, we're going to get steamrolled. And we had the common turn with communist Soviet Union. I could be democratic with the United Kingdom and the United States, or I could pick fascist and roll with Hitler and Mussolini. And considering the geography, I chose to make a, um, a communist Iraq. So I befriended the Soviet Union, I declared war on Saudi Arabia, took all of this. I actually made my way all the way to the Suez Canal and even staged a coup in Iran. Uh, they were a kingdom and right now they're, they're, they have no party alignment. But I definitely Im, uh, implanted a communist coup they had a civil war break out. It was good fun. However, my, my Soviet friends up north uh, didn't fare too well in our wars, got beaten by France, the United Kingdom, and all of a sudden, old uh, Winston Churchill, in his great wisdom, there's the smug bulldog right there, felt that everyone in the alliance need to, needs to become democratic. So, he made me democratic, took my army away. I don't have any troops anymore. I had 25 divisions of soldiers, not anymore. No manpower, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel, uh, <laughs> trying to get soldiers. I didn't have enough for much, but what I did have was enough to build one nuclear bomb and drop it right here on Ankara, which I feel for you, buddy. You have a, uh, a nuclear waste here. And what's funny is that he doesn't hold it against me that I dropped a bomb on him. 
but he's with the Axis now. Um, so yeah, I was having a lot of fun with this game, and I was just, you know, sort of feeling, testing the waters. Is this something you would like to see me play? Would you like to see me do a playthrough of Hearts of Iron 4? Uh, I'm definitely going to finish up this game. I've only got about two years left in this game, and I'm on the winning team. Uh, looking at the Bulgarian-Greek War with all of these uh, democratic nations, all we have to do is stomp Italy into the ground, and he that war will be done, and then stomp Japan into the ground, and this war will be done. And I'm hoping that since my good friends, the uh, Russians, have an air base here, that will put me within range, especially, like, say, right here, for my strategic bomber to, say, level Tokyo, and it will be Iraq that deals the atomic bomb uh, to Japan instead of the United States. But that's just sort of, uh, that's just sort of my, my thoughts and my ramblings. Uh, Hearts of Iron is definitely a deep game with a lot of things to consider. Uh, buildings, trade, uh, recruitment of your uh, divisions, as you can see, it takes 10,000 troops to make one basic infantry unit, and I only have 20 people fit for military service. So this may be a rough ending, but luckily I've got all of my friends in the neighborhood uh, to see me along for the next couple of years. But if this is something you would like to see me play, perhaps uh, start with Iraq again, maybe Siam, you know, who knows? But I'm definitely going to play it. Whether or not it is on YouTube, that is uh, for the comments to decide if you see this video. Uh, if not a whole lot of people watch this video, I'll just assume that I can put something up and see how it goes. Uh, but this is just a quick look of Hearts of Iron and what I've been working on in my off time. Um, but yeah, really enjoying the game. Good on you, Paradox. Uh, I'll finish this game up and definitely continue playing on my own. And you may see another playthrough on my YouTube channel, perhaps say Communist Canada or Communist United States or Fascist United States. We'll change up history, you know, make it fun and interesting for sure. But that is going to do it for me in this sort of first look uh, discussion video about Hearts of Iron 4. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.